Pickaxe. I had a real um, horror movie style nightmare the other day. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It was really horrible. I dreamt that I know people, no one likes to hear about other people's dreams, but this is really short, so I'll just tell you it. Basically, I was just walking through a really nice sunny field with my mm. wife, right? We're walking along, and then all of a sudden, I noticed that like she was just crying, like weeping to herself, but like kind of she didn't necessarily want to know, want me to know that she was crying, but I noticed and I was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she went, what's that weird thing? And I like followed her gaze thinking she'd seen something and there wasn't anything there. There was just like a tree stump in the, on the other side of the field. And I was like, what do you mean? What weird thing? What weird thing? And she just looked at me and she went, in our house at night. And I was like, oh my <laughs> God, <laughs> what on earth does that mean? Um, and then I woke up in my house at night at like four o'clock in the morning. And I was like, oh. the thing. I, I didn't see the weird thing, but I felt its presence. I thought it, it must be there. Jesus. This oh, that's is a the thing. warning from my my ape brain telling me <laughs> something's here. No, I think that is the thing in your room trying to communicate with, with you in the dream world. Mm. It, it just it, uh, propulsed you awake. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. sweet dreams, Peter. It sounds like you've got a haunting Thanks. in your hands. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Are you the kind of man who would appreciate a haunting, or would it like objectively terrify you in every way? Uh, no, I mean, if if I actually was haunted, which I you know I, I don't necessarily put much stock in that but uh if if i actually experienced a ghost in my house i don't think i'd be that happy you you had your your demon didn't you in your house oh yeah the sex demon the, the sex yeah. demon yeah yeah i sadly haven't had any more run-ins with them or oh. any other ghost i say sadly i like i'm very much the kind of person where um, I, I don't think I'd sleep for a year if I saw something in my room, heard something in my room. Mm. I'd never feel comfortable again. So uh, that's the kind of horror that scares me. Like, um, you know, I don't mind going and seeing like a slasher film or a monster movie. But uh, the other day, um, Amy was saying to me, oh, do you want to go and see this? I can't even think what it was, but it, she, she sent me a trailer and it was like a ghost or demon, like, you know, possession horror movie. And I was like, you know what? No, I don't. Thank you very much. Um that's that's the kind of stuff that spooks me really so. yeah yeah i can take blood guts and go any day but it's like it's just stuff in the dark that's enough like ugh, woods nah screw them at night time nah let's not <laughs> uh, i just i did hope i'd grow out of my slight fear of the dark by this by this point but um, now i've got adult brain and i can think about more complex and scary scenarios which is, is yeah. great nice one thanks why did we evolve this way how you doing, Ben? Hello. You are right, Ben? I'm good. I'm oh, sorry. I was just enjoying listening to you two talk about uh, ghosts and goblins and <laughs> real adult fears like taxes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, There's the scary things. real horror. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. No spooky things happened to me. Although I did, um, I was laying in bed the other day and uh, I th- could have sworn I just saw a spider in front of my face. Ooh. So, oh. Like I tried to, I tried to, like a little one. In the dark. It, it, yeah no the tv was on some i can't remember the exact scenario but basically i clearly wasn't awake properly Mm. and i saw what i thought was a spider so i just reached out i just like tried to grab it my partner was like are you all right and i said yeah i thought like because at that point i woke up i thought i felt really you know how you do you feel really silly like i thought there was a spider but there's not a spider it's fine don't worry it's okay she was like she doesn't like spiders, mm. and uh, mm. I, I pretend like I then went into full damage control mode. Like, no, 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 it wasn't a real spider. Right, I promise, yeah. <laughs> it was just a fictional sleep spider <laughs> that I saw for a moment. But it was safe. It's okay. Don't worry about it. That's... Uh, I don't know why my reaction was just to sort of reach out and try and grab it, yeah. like in my fist. I don't know. <laughs> Hmm. apparently that's quite a common um like when you're kind of half sleep and half awake um a lot of people just see spider-like creatures um which i've i've also had in the past i've like it used to happen a lot in my uh teenage years where i'd wake up um just and like open my eyes i'd see like several things scuttle across the bed very oh, quickly like just as i open nice. my eyes i see them all scuttle away and good lord nothing wakes you up more at like three in the morning than that <laughs> sight that you like like desperately like you're still in kind of bed brain mode and you start like rattling the sheets. Like, where are they? Where are they? I yeah. saw you guys. Mm. Ugh, it's a common, ugh. it's also a common like bad trip, isn't it? That people see spiders. Um, <laughs> someone in my family who I won't name uh, described, I think he took magic mushrooms once and he just, he could like see spiders in front of him. Even when he shut his eyes, it was like he could still see them, not just in his mind's eye, but like they were actually there in front of him. Uh, and he just <laughs> wow. couldn't get away from them. So yeah, not good. What fun. It's yeah. apparently a thing if you t- if you take 
Benadryl. I'm not sure what the English equivalent of Benadryl is, but um, I think it's just some kind of like over-the-counter medicine, but people found out if you ate a whole bottle of it, this isn't medical advice, don't do this, this is the opposite of that. <laughs> but um, you get visits from the, the hat man and you start seeing like spies oh, and stuff the and everything. Hat man? No. The hat man. <laughs> the Benadryl Does everyone hat get the man. same hat man? Apparently, yeah, it's like, this, this, like it seems to be like a recurring figure um, when you're having, well, not just a jolly time, just ha- living a nightmare on Benadryl. Yeah. <laughs> Does it say that in the, in the little pamphlet that comes with it? <laughs> hat man <laughs> oh dear yeah, awful well awful. we're a bit early for spook month but that was a pretty spooky mm. intro i reckon yeah i was about to say do you guys want to go on a shared hallucination now for the next hour or so yeah i mean that is what it's like um All oh right. my god mikey i've just seen what you, posted <laughs> what have you put the there well, oh, i think i've really seen that picture before <laughs> oh my god i can't take benadryl because i owe the hat man money and i don't want to see him that's a jumper <laughs> oh i want that <laughs> i can't uh, want to take benadryl now yeah, i know it's see. yeah it's one of those things that like objectively everyone who's ever tried it says it's like it's just a nightmare but can't want to visit that, visit <laughs> from the hat man be? i bet the hat <laughs> man's great yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll get along if i'm ever feeling lonely one night i'll just <laughs> you know invite the hat man round <laughs> oh dear that's a good um way of saying taking drugs um uh, tonight i'm inviting the hat man around sorry i'm busy i've got the hat man coming <laughs> oh, well Christ. on that shall note we, <laughs> shall we move on gentlemen yeah. yes Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poddy. It's the official, official. Vidiots, Vidiots podcast. podcast. It's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the law of the three ers, where everybody brings a thing, thing along to, to talk, talk about. about. I'm Ben. I'm Peter. And I'm the Hat Man. Ooh, oh, no, he's here. <laughs> Hello, I'm Michael. It reminded Just me. Just kidding. You say, you know, it's like a sort of an epithet for uh, for taking drugs one night. My, uh, a guy I used to live with at uni, uh, when he was seeing his dealer, he referred to, I think it was a, a guy, but it was like a code name. He said, I'm off to see Lucy Goodbags. Um, <laughs> because Lucy had good bags, I think. That yeah. is, That's great. That is the lamest way to describe a drug dealer. I know, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it also sounds like slang for going to see a drug dealer. It's not very good. No, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think it was even... It wasn't like a thieves' cant so that the police okay. didn't know what he was talking about. But yeah, it was. I don't know if it was like if there were some origins to it from like back home for him. Like I, I met him at uni, so I don't know. But he just said... Yeah, oh, um, you know, Lucy Goodbags was the name for for his dealer. <laughs> Lucy Goodbags. I've yeah. just Googled Lucy Goodbags, and it's not... There's Juicy Lucy Designs. They make right. bags, but that's it. Are they that's good bags? Got. I don't know. No? <laughs> Hard to say. Yeah, well... Nice. Uh, how are we all doing on this fine, fine, stiflingly hot late summer's eve? It's hot. It's a bit close, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. Flipping close. That summer that we didn't get all summer is finally here. So yeah. that's, you know, that's nice. Uh, yeah, doing okay. Apart from the, you know, the the heat. But it's actually, uh, because I'm now in my house as opposed to my old flat. Yes. It's, it's still bad, but it's not as bad. Mm. So that it's a bit more bearable, which is nice. Good. Congratulations. Good. Yes. Thank you. You've made Thank it. You. And how are you, Michael? I, uh, I'm good. I've got nothing. I, I, I got... His brain is fallen out of his ears so far this evening. For anyone yeah. who's watching at home, you probably as well notice beads of sweat dripping from me. And it's, <laughs> it's it's unstoppable. So on it, like right now, I, I mean, you can probably tell by the fact I started going on about the Benadryl man and all this <laughs> crap. I'm I'm on I'm on one today, so this might be interesting. I've got sweat brain. You might see, see the hat man just from heat stroke, to be honest. You don't need the Benadryl. <laughs> oh, here's um, hoping. If I keep focusing on sweating more, he'll come visit. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot the hotter down there for you. The kids are screeching. Are the kids screeching near you guys? They are. I have to shut my windows. Yeah. yeah. They're always it, screeching. That's all they do. It's just the time of... It's, it's 1922 and it's time for kids to screech. Yeah. This is kids time. Yeah. All yeah. back in bloody school. They think they can come home and screech. Yeah. Yeah, they should be knackered. You should have died of heat exhaustion by now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good children do. Yeah. I saw a headline earlier today uh, that said 
the government has now published uh, a list of schools in England where, uh, suffering from crumbling concrete. <laughs> crumbling yeah, concrete. Uh, Brilliant. I mean, I mean that's great this, news. This but also, scandal, the, the concrete scandal. Nuts. I haven't I haven't heard about the concrete scandal, but I, I did hope that maybe it would reduce perhaps the screeching of the children. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't have warned their school. schools and just let them all crumble with all the occupants inside. That, yeah. Sure, yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, it's not it was it's like hundreds of schools. <laughs> so They've had to close that, any any room or building that is made out of this concrete. It's like a massive problem. Um Fantastic. Because, uh, apparently they've known about it for a while as well. Uh, and they've just sort of, of course they their heads yeah, in the sand. You know. yeah. The UK Apparently, is a big country. It's great. Citation needed, but I was told that um, a, a primary school classroom's roof fell in um, over lockdown. This was a while oh my ago. Oh, God. Um, and, you know, they were just lucky that there wasn't, like, you know, 30 children in there. Um, and then since then, it's just been, you know, they've been having advice from, like, surveyors and stuff. And they've been now been told, this can't go on any longer. You need to close all of these schools. So oh, it's man. going well. Fucking hell. Man, That's imagine great. that. You've just had six weeks off for summer holiday. You come back and find out, oops, school's not open. All right, yeah. more holiday then. Yeah. As you know, we sadly, we've got experience through COVID. So now everyone can teach from home. So if, yeah. as you know, the kids are still getting yeah, rubbed into it. Yeah. There'll still be sc- anything to stop the screeching, basically. That's all <laughs> I... Maybe I should invest in like an air rifle or something. I'm pretty sure I could shoot them from here. They sound close by anyway. Um, mm-hmm. So... Maybe I'll do that for next time. If you would like to help us, you at home, save up for an air rifle or maybe (laughs) perhaps save up to replace the concrete of a school. Of a local school. We will not be spending it on that. We're that generous. Uh, You can go to podiots.com and if you donate £3 or more, you'll get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show and you'll join Pod Squad. Just like... Raindrop Joy... Fred Weber in Florida. Let's get Cheggy Cheggy. Let's get Cheggy Cheggy. Let's get Cheggy to jungle. Very good. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was just waiting to see where that one would go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Diogenes Nuts. That's nice. Stunning. That's very, very good. Uh, Nia Changed Experience, who was very generous, and they say. I was in Bali a week ago. A flipping earthquake hit the island in the middle of the night. Twice! I was too scared to go back to sleep, so I put on a Podiots episode. It calmed me down, and for that, you boys deserve my money. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank thank you. you Glad to hear you're okay. There's probably some episode we've done about... The the death toll of a massive earthquake or something. We've done that many things. (laughs) Oh, yeah, you don't want to put that one on. Yeah. (laughs) Should we try like a no? We just shouldn't try a sleepy time podcast at some point. We just whisper everything into the microphone. Yeah. Oh, lovely! Oh, thank the you. House guy is coming. Take your Benadryl. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! No, stop it! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we continue with Mister Blobby's mistress, uh, Lord on vacation, Vic, Don Echo Seven, and Stephen Skodes. Thank you all. Thank you very much. The list continues with Finn Tristam, David Dick in Bum. Cheap ass chip, cheap, cheap ass chips. Uh, Blobby Dazzler, Good. stop clenching your fists. Pod Squad Triple Crown winner, who was very generous and said, achievement unlocked. Selected by each boy or girl as a favourite from Pod Squad. Wow. Uh, with the names Tony Hawk Prostator or Prostator, Squats McCheese. And double double toil and trouble tubs. <laughs> uh, new goal: disguise my shameless vanity as generosity, like a proper patron of the arts. Mm. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have JoJo's bizarre philosophy. Diodger D's nuts. Wow, which is slightly double whammy. Very yeah. good. Michael Thunderfart Johnson, nice. arse face, and I am become D's. <laughs> And that continues with Destroyer of Nuts, uh, which <laughs> wow. is the first of mine. Uh, we've also got Ricky Dicky 3 who is very generous and said, Hello, ya boys. Hope you're well. I wanted to share some wild news that we, my wife, are expecting our fourth child. Oof. I thought I was done, but apparently not. Yeah. I have girls and hope for a boy. Any good names you like. Thanks and boppis to all. Mm. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations. I hope you're First and foremost, well, yeah, yes, do well done. That. Yes, good, good job on the very strong uh, sperm. Mm, ah. 
You're right. Yeah, yeah. Just well, yeah. Just making words. It's fine. Please continue. Very still fun. Um, uh, perhaps hmm. Bobby, B O B B I, Bobby Babalooney. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's a good one. Not Babalooney, just Bobby. Yeah, it has to be Vidiot. I think it needs to be something Vidiot's inspired. If mm, we're going to yeah. give you a Milo, Keith, Milo. Bella, Bella, Bella. Oh no! Actually, yeah, Bella's like probably the most like milk toast of the video universe names but has the weirdest backstory so that's quite a good yeah. one yeah sort of associated with being on life support so i don't know if that's <laughs> what you want to it's call it's a good name time. for a boy as well but yeah like, uh what else we got we could always always have um dave no. mm. multiple yeah. daves um or perhaps neil I'm think I'm thinking if you have I mean by the sounds of it you you're gonna have more children four already so name all future children Rod and then they can become the Rod Squad um kind of like Rod Squad <laughs> uh, excellent yeah <laughs> thank you for your donation thank good luck you, yes. choosing one of those names they're all winners we've also got Peter Peter Fecal Transplant mm. uh, Mr Macca. Prince Beefcakes, the obscenely generous, <gasps> sexy young homosexual, who Jesus. said, for, for your new bike, if it has been found by now, just split the cash, boys. Appreciate everything you've done to keep us entertained all these years. Thank wow. you so much. Thank you. That's Thank you so much generous. indeed. Very Holy generous. Lolly. Thank you. Thank Very you. kind of you. Uh, no, the police have not found my bike. I've not <laughs> spoken to the police since the day I reported it. They've given me no update. Uh, I've just heard nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. Sick. <laughs> uh, so that's good. Uh, thank you. We've also got Andorra the Explorer, the bovine drink for Vim, and R.I.P. Vimbos. Aww. And that is your pod squad for this week. Remember, podiots.com, three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the podcast. Support us and join pod squad. Do you boys have a favourite? Uh, probably uh, Diogenes Nuts or Diogenes Nuts. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning yeah. towards Diogenes nuts. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just. I'm, I'm also a- going for a nuts one, but I want. I would like the two parter. I am become D's destroyer of nuts. Yeah, that's my personal favourite this nice. time around. Amazing work, Pod Squad. Love you, uh, Michael Johnson. That's your name. You're yes. in charge of listener submitted things this week. Ooh, you're darn tootin' I am. Um, so I'm going to throw it right back to you, Ben. How would you like Ooh. to kick us off with your viewer submitted thing? I would love to. Let me just click the relevant tab. Here I go. And I would like to thank, I would like to thank, I would like to thank Groovy Pasty at Groovy Pasty for submitting this news. I understand a lot of people submitted it, Mikey, but th- this person was the first person. Yeah, this was the first one to get in there. So um, well done. You, you won the race. Hmm. Okay, here we go. This is from WSBTV.com. Apparently they're celebrating their 75th anniversary this year. Congratulations. Oh, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> Atlanta flight forced to come back after flyer has diarrhea and then in quotes all the way through the plane, pilot says. Right, all s- the way through. I saw all a little an out of context video clip of this this morning and I was like, what is that? And then I just thought this might be on poddy, so I'm not going to look any further. <laughs> you were bang on. Mm-hmm. You know our you know our listeners and yeah. our viewers, too. Uh, so here we go. Here's here's some context for you. It is something that most flyers probably believe would be unimaginable, but a Delta flight from Atlanta had to turn around Friday after a person on board soiled themselves. Delta confirmed that flight DL-194 from Atlanta to Barcelona had to turn back because a passenger on board was having a medical issue. Uh The flight was about two hours out when Business Insider reported that it had to turn back. In an audio transmission from the flight deck posted on X, boo, posted on Twitter by an aviation enthusiast, the pilot said, this is a biohazard issue. Oh my We've had a God. passenger who's had diarrhea all the way through the airplane, so they want us to come back to Atlanta. <laughs> in, oh, in how the much from diarrhea Delta, is that? Well, I'll, I'll give you some more information, Mikey, Ooh, because okay. it, it sounds like they had to replace all of the carpet in the oh, plane. It was, the video is not good. Um, of the aftermath. So someone took a video from on the plane? Yeah, it's afterwards. It's not filming what? someone oh, okay. shitting oh. everywhere, but it's yeah, it's what, what happened afterwards. I think it might be a member of the crew because the plane's empty at that point. So Jesus. That, I mean, that is not 
in the article, as you might imagine. Right. Uh, but uh, in the statement from Delta, a spokesperson said, our teams worked as quickly and safely as possible to thoroughly clean the airplane and get our customers to their final destination. We sincerely apologise to our customers for the delay and inconvenience to their travel plans. The flight ended up being delayed about eight hours before taking off again for oh. Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's an embedded tweet here from the person I assume it doesn't have your video in, Peter, but there's an audio recording of the pilot saying that there's a biohazard issue, which was quoted. Uh, there's some, what is this? The the FAA flight strip that says, passenger diarrhea all over. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it says on it. Oh, no. There's some more information. Oh, and someone tweeted Delta saying, any idea what's going on with DL-194 in flight for almost two hours? And now heading back to Atlanta with my son on board. Would like an update as to what the issue is and what the update is on getting to Barcelona. And uh, L has replied and said, thank you for tweeting with Delta. My name is L. Please send a private DM for assistance. <laughs> no extra context. Right given there Uh, but someone else does reply and say both my wife and i were on the flight it was a mess the pilots made the right decision to turn around the ground crew ripped out the carpet and put new in considering the circumstances the ground crew did a great job along with the the attendants and the pilots oh dear good i I, i've I've found a video and it's grim man it's absolutely grim it's really bad it's the bad someone else has replied before before i watch this and feel unwell my partner was on that flight. It was pretty bad. It, oh, I'm so sorry. If if you're eating, maybe stop. <laughs> it was dribbled down the aisle. Mm. Smelled horrible. The vanilla scented disinfectant used on it only made it smell like vanilla shit. Oh. After the plane landed, it was thoroughly cleaned. They didn't leave around until around 2.30 a.m. Oh, man. Vanilla, so- you were just... For maybe for the rest of your life, if you smell fake, like, chemical vanilla smell, you will just mm. remember this forever. Remember that. Someone else says, I remember this exact mission in Resident Evil 6. (laughs) Leon was never the same after this biohazard incident. It's a biohazard issue, yeah. Okay, what have you sent us here then, Mikey? Oh, is is that just a photo or a video? It's it's like midway through the article is the video. I I can't. It's just brown, like, going down the entire length of the plane kind of um, aisle where... I'll. I'm just gonna um, hide that. I don't want to look at it. Anymore. Yeah, that's a good shout. Um, we won't yeah. add this to the. Uh, we won't add this one to the thread. But no. find it if you want to see it. And if you do, put why? a nice picture of a plane on there. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Wow, fantastic. I could not imagine being that person. Um, yeah, thoughts and prayers and, and yes. medication but, to that person. But. Please. That is so humiliating, isn't it? That that's gone viral for that poor person. Yeah. Oh, bless him. Fortunately, bless him. you know there appears to be zero information out there about who they are what even what demographic they were age you know gender so they're mm. they're pretty much anonymous um every, yeah. i mean everyone on the plane would be able to describe them if they had to but hopefully none of the people covering this in their articles are going to say and how would you what was the person do you know their name do you know where they live um can we publish that information cuz god yeah Good it's bad enough that a plane of 200 people saw that happen, but yeah. Ah, oh, bless them. Well, wishing them a speedy recovery and please mm, rehydrate yes. whoever you are because you've lost yeah. a lot of liquids there. Good God. Yeah, it sounds like it was a lot. <laughs> mm. oh, thank you very much, Ben. <sighs> You're welcome. Um, Peter, would you like to treat us to your thingamajig? I would. Um, this is according to the theirishtimes.com. Um, and it's a write-up of a historical event that I've uh, been meaning to cover, and uh, it, I found this pretty decent write-up of it uh, at last. I mean, I could have maybe written my, my own thing uh, in the time that it's taken me to actually find this, but I'm lazy. <laughs> and as long as I say it's from the irishtimes.com, written by Dean Ruxton, that's me covered. So uh, here we go. <laughs> um, the night a river of whiskey ran through the streets of Dublin. Ooh. Um, so... This is about the 1875 Chamber Street Fire, or the uh, Dublin Whiskey Fire. At William Smith's inquest, his father James spoke to confirm that he was a labourer, unmarried, and 21 years old when he died. That was on Tuesday evening. The previous Friday, William met his neighbour, John McGrain, at the corner of Bow Street in Dublin's north inner city. Word was quickly spreading of a huge fire engulfing the Liberties. It was 10pm on June 18th, 1875, and the two young men decided to cross the city to take a look. 
Earlier, at 4.45pm, Malone's Malt House and a bonded storehouse on Chamber Street, where some 5,000 barrels of whiskey and other spirits were being stored, were checked and all was in order. At 8pm, the alarm was raised, according to a report in the Irish Times. The fire quickly spread. As the flames reached the wooden casks holding the liquor, they burst open, sending a burning river of whiskey flowing through the streets. Oh my god. Yeah. (laughs) By the time William and John set out for the blaze, the flow measured two feet wide and six inches deep and stretched more than 400 metres down one side of Mill Street. Livestock was common in the city at the time, and the squeals of fleeing pigs added to the chaos as the tenements rapidly emptied of residents. Amid the frightening bustle, crowds gathered along the stream of alcohol. For many, the inferno presented a rare opportunity. It is stated, this is, this is a quote now from the Irish Times, it is stated that caps, porringers and other vessels were in great requisition to scoop up the liquor as it flowed from the burning premises and, disgusting as it may seem, some fellows were observed to take off their boots and use them as drinking cups, Ooh. reported the Irish Ooh. Times on June 21st. Do, do what? shoes hold liquid? Like, well, would it, probably would the liquid stay in there. <laughs> not, not long. In, I mean, just to quickly scoop it up. You know, I guess it's like cup in your hands. You know, it sort of flows out between your fingers, but you can quickly have a, a yeah, bit of whiskey. A, mm, um, what was the result? Continues the quote from the Irish Times. Uh, eight men were carried in a comatose state to Meath Hospital. Twelve to Jervis Street Hospital, three to Stevens Hospital, and one young man to Mercer's Hospital. And even these numbers do not rep- represent the entire of the persons put hors de combat by the drink. That's <laughs> written in italics because it's French or Latin oh. or something. Fancy. Um, in all, 13 people are understood to have died as a result of the fire, but none of the deceased perished in the flames, nor did they die of smoke inhalation. Each one succumbed to alcohol poisoning from drinking freely of the derelict whiskey. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> legends. <laughs> Among them was the aforementioned Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. McGrain described how William drank from the flow near the coom, scooping it up with his cupped hands. He drank a great deal. What I drank was out of a jug. Nearly everyone was drinking it. The deceased suddenly fell down and became insensible. Two men, strangers, helped me to bring William part of the way home as far as Meath Street. We then met some other men, neighbours, who helped to bring him the rest of of the way. William arrived home shortly before midnight and was brought to Richmond Hospital the next morning in a state of profound coma. He improved slightly (laughs) under treatment, even regaining consciousness at one point, but died on Sunday night as a a result of alcohol poisoning. I I wasn't laughing at him. I was laughing at just the phrase profound coma. Profound coma is an interesting phrase, yeah. (laughs) That's that's good. That's very good. Uh, Some of those hospitalised in the aftermath had better fortune. In the other... uh, This is a quote again from the report. In the other cases, the patients were treated in the usual way and having recovered were discharged on Saturday morning, perhaps sadder and, it is to be hoped, wiser men. (laughs) <laughs> uh, hundreds of police officers, soldiers and firefighters led by the first chief of Dublin Fire Brigade, Captain James Robert Ingram, attended the scene within 15 minutes of the alarm being raised. They were later commended for their bravery in quelling the fire and moving residents out of harm's way. Um, this continues, though. I mean, it's now sort of describing describing the fire. Uh, where is it? A number of pigs were destroyed, while the Irish Times also reported... Oh, no. Uh, the Irish Times also re- reported a case of canine suicide in the aftermath of what? the fire. Excuse me? Um, <laughs> What's on that, Tuesday, please? On Tuesday night, a dog ran through the open door of the home of William Eyre in Dominic Street Upper. Dominic Street Upper. Uh, the animal was foaming at the mouth and evidently either rabid or suffering from delirium tremens <laughs> at, the hand, at the hands of lapped up whiskey. The dog dashed madly about the house, knocking over furniture and attacking the homeowner. When Mr. Eyre fended off the dog using an iron bar, the animal ran upstairs, jumped from a top floor window and terminated its existence in the road below. Holy moly. That sounds like... That sounds like a man killed his dog. Yeah, and thought, (laughs) oh, I know what I'll say. Uh, It was on the night of that fire and it jumped out of the window. Um, Yeah. 
What this article doesn't actually include, I've only just realised, is that part of um, the way that they kind of dealt with the fire and the fact that, remember, this is a flowing fire of whiskey, um, mm. uh, or flowing river of whiskey on fire, uh, is that they used horse manure to, like, build a sort of dam and to kind of soak up the whiskey as well. So, yeah, it's a really strange story, this, but um, that that is pretty much it. Um, it says at the end, in the present case... Uh, the unfortunate victims apparently could not restrain themselves, as I understand, from the burning fluid. So there you go. The death toll was one suicidal dog and 13 people, none of whom died of fire or smoke. They drank themselves to death. Um, also, that article doesn't make it clear that part of the reason that they died of alcohol poisoning, because you'd think like, all right, you might have all the free free whiskey in the world, but like, hopefully you wouldn't drink so much that you would kill yourself. But um, I think what some of them didn't realise is that it was sort of undistilled, kind of in in quite a raw oh, form, this whiskey, and right. it, it wasn't really ready to be drunk. Um, so that is partly why they uh, ended up um, giving themselves alcohol poisoning. Oh, so there Would you, go. you, though, if you saw alcohol running down the street, would no. you just drink it? No, in a in streets, even if you thought it was safe, <laughs> streets that are full of squealing pigs and horse manure being used <laughs> yeah, to soak up yeah. the, the fire. How bad is that? Yeah, it's not the most very pleasant, strange. Not the most pleasant scene to get drunk in, um, especially. Well, it's it's well, yeah, whiskey's one of the flaming spirits, so it is it is on fire. Um, mm. Like yeah. imagine taking your shoes off and just dipping it into this river of fiery brown liquid. Like it's, mm. I mean, it's impressive. No one caught fire. Um, yeah. But I respect I respect them for being committed to it and really really trying to get that free whiskey. But good lord, yeah. good lord, I hope they did it upstream from the shit dam. <laughs> oh yeah, me too. And maybe that pe- some people did catch fire, but certainly no one died of that. So yeah, um, it's it's a strange old story. But there you go. Yeah, That's damn. the uh, the Dublin whiskey fire for you. Wow. I kind of want to smell that. I just got to no, smell. You don't. It's got to like burn your insides. <laughs> no, you, don't. you don't want to smell that. <laughs> I don't want to smell it because it's pleasant. I want to smell it because it'll be an experience. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Much like flight. Uh, uh, I don't know whatever the code was. Much like the flight that was uh, turned around. Yes, it would be an experience <laughs> to smell it. Mm. Uh, Delta Airlines to, only need to have it once. And then yeah. It's never again. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe like well, I was like what I thought like. When the first first time I got punched, like you know, you'd assume, oh, we've done it once. You'd never want to be punched again. But here I am, many years later, still gagging to be punched again for some reason. There's, there's something about it, but I don't think I'd be <laughs> chasing the same high of um, smelling poopies. Are you being sincere right now, Mikey? Yeah, it's weird. Is is like for you some reason. You want to be pun- what? You could, you could get punched if you want to. I'm sure. Yeah, but no one, no one's taken me up on it yet. I, 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 I genuinely like considered doing a bit of boxing just to get battered up a bit. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> is this weird? Is punched? this weird? Yeah, just like okay. there's, there's a quick one too. Not like a full on fist fight. Just a whapa. and then. Do you yeah. want, like? Is, do you want to join like a fight club or? No, that's scary. Like just like. Just like a gent, not gentle. Just like enough just to want, feel it, but not enough to be want incapacitated. To ask someone kindly to punch you in the face twice. Mm, yeah, in, in as safe a way as possible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, like little little bit of a thrill, but in a controlled environment. It's just like a roller coaster. I'm sure, sure. Th- there would definitely be some people who would oblige. Probably even some listeners. <laughs> This isn't an open invitation if you see me on the street to come clock me one, please. It's, <laughs> it's him! <laughs> Get him, boys! <laughs> is, that we- is that really weird? I like, can't say I've ever heard of that before, but some people do like it? to be beaten up for sexual reasons, and some people yeah. like to be beaten up because of the uh, there's like an adrenaline in- mm. endorphin thing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more on the adrenaline endorphin side of things, uh, <laughs> I think. It's just, yeah, it's, it's just an interesting uh, sensation. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> oh, well, we God. learned a lot about Michael Johnson. Thank you, Peter. We did. You're very welcome. <laughs> oh very God. welcome. I'm going to very quickly move on. Um, I'm going to do my viewer submitted thing. Okay. Um, this one was submitted by Sarah at ba- at Bags for Dice on Twitter, and uh, this is an article from ABC Seven News Eyewitness News. Uh, and the headline reads: Dog runs away from home, sneaks into Metallica concert at SoFi Stadium. Oh, yes. brilliant! Fantastic. Come on, boy. Get that. Get it. (laughs) 
the article begins. You may have seen this on social media. A post about a dog that was allegedly abandoned at a Metallica concert at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood last weekend. But, as is usually the case, there is more to the story. It turns out that the German Shepherd wasn't abandoned. Abandoned. She just likes to rock. (laughs) (laughs) After a few days of online outrage over a dog owner purportedly leaving their pup at SoFi, Metallica updated the story, posting on Instagram and saying, Despite reports to the contrary, our friend Storm snuck out of her home adjacent to the stadium and made her way to the gig all by herself. (laughs) Wow. After a full night taking in the show with her Metallica family, Storm was safely reunited with her actual family the next day. Good. How did the dog get in? Maybe it'll explain. No, no, there's not much more to the Sandman. She just heard it and had to go get it. But like, surely the security were like, "Oh, hold on, you got a ticket, love. Come on, (laughs) (laughs) you're not allowed back here." I can picture exactly what happened. Security saw this dog approach and thought, "Huh, that that dog's walking up to us." And then it walked straight past them, and they went, "Um, oh well." And that was, "I'm not being paid to do that," and they just left it. It probably uh, knows someone inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've probably seen it around a lot. It's a regular. Yeah. Uh, the article continues. The the four-legged fan had a great time listening to her favourite songs. And uh, there's a couple of um, Metallica puns in here, so get ready. Master Inclu- of Puppies. Oh, yeah, that's one that's of them. Good. Well done. That's great. That's, yeah, yeah. Um, they've also got Bark's Eternia. I'm not, I don't know enough about uh, Metallica to get that one. No, I don't. No. And the mailman that never comes. Anyone? Okay. No, 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 no idea. <laughs> no, it nope. might be that. Might be a Sandman thing. I'm not oh sure. wait, no. Tongue in cheek references to some of the band's most well known songs. Well, one out of three is not bad. That's the yeah, we got. <laughs> uh, and and the article finishes up on. And in case you were wondering, no, you definitely shouldn't bring your furry friends to the M72 World Tour, the band added. But this dog sure did have her day. (laughs) (laughs) What fun, what fun. I I respect the dog. Like, yeah, go get it. And like, it looks like it made its way to like a seating area. It grabbed a seat. um, So (laughs) it's doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go a few beers, watch Metallica. That's that's a good old time. And then you know, bam, you, you just mooch on home at the end, live across the road, mm-hmm. and you come back with some wonderful tales. Brilliant. That can't be good for a dog's hearing. No, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> no, absolutely not. But hey, it's worth it. It's, it's worth it. Damn it. Oh, I kind of want to see a dog at a gig now. I don't think I've ever seen any animals inside a music venue. No. Hmm. I mean, there's a good reason for that. Yeah, as you just described. Yeah, they'd probably be a bit startled, wouldn't they? Yes, it is quite a lot. Uh, Maybe like, um, what's the, the, what is that BBC thing where it's like classical music? like proms. Proms on the park, not pims on the park. (laughs) Dogs like parks as well. There you go. I think that's an adequate way to kind of um, get the the animals used to being in music venues. And then we work them up to Metallica. That's the healthy way to do it. I think All someone's right. really poorly photoshopped a dog in front of this crowd of people at a concert, but uh, right. oh, there seems to be that. video footage of the of the dog. I don't know if that's that's photoshopped that photo you've sent. I think it's just I don't know. Maybe oh, that's, a, that's a weird one. Let's see, I suppose it is actually photoshopped. Yeah, because the the quality in the background is like like an old photo. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's just sorry. There's a photo here. There's a dog just sat. In one of the seats, right. watching Metallica. Let me send you a photo. Mm. It's taken from the back, like <laughs> like it's been caught in the act. Hang on, it's a it's a good photo. I'm a fan of this. Here it comes. Just watching, <laughs> just watching the show. Ah. It looks so happy. <laughs> it's taken a seat on one of the seats, which is yeah. the best bit. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh my god, what have you? I mean, that, to be fair, that dog in front of the dog is just two people stood facing the dog so that that dog has a view of crotch instead of Vitalik. Yeah, dogs like crotch, view. though, so you know, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Ah, wonderful. Um, ah, brain, melty brain, who's okay. next? Okay. P, yeah, uh, wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. P- Peter, you've done no. your thing thing. Now, yeah. Ben, you can do your it's thing It's my turn. Thing. That's there it. Well done, Michael. Knocking out the park. 
You'll be able to go to sleep soon. Uh, <laughs> I can't. It's too warm. <laughs> my thing is the story of Angus Barbary. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I'm probably murdering that pronunciation. Angus Barbary, the man who didn't eat for 382 days. Wow. Oh. It's a new story from historydefined.net, but there's loads of write-ups. It has a Wikipedia and an article and everything. Have you ever wondered just how long the human body can go without food? In June of 1965, Angus, Angus sorry, Barberi, a seemingly average, normal Scottish man, that's just two words that mean the same thing back to back, <laughs> captured the world's fascination. He embarked on what would become an unbelievable 382-day fasting journey. He decided to attempt to overcome his food addiction and lose weight. Barbary shattered all records and expectations, stupefying scientists and public onlookers. His remarkable f uh, fast defied all conventional beliefs and pushed the boundaries. It painted a vivid portrait of a man striving to conquer the shackles of obesity. It's a bit colourful, isn't it, the language? Also, that, that, don't paint this as a healthy way to do that. Don't just not eat no. for you. My God. No, <laughs> I'm, yeah, if you've got food be... addiction, you don't just stop overnight. <laughs> I'm going to insert some important context momentarily, but I'm just reading the introduction. Oh. How did he do it? How does a man's mind and body emerge intact after an astonishing 382 days without eating a morsel of food? Ultimately, the spellbinding story of Angus Barbary, a man who dared to reshape his destiny, captured the attention of the world and inspired countless individuals to push their limits. I agree. The way this article is glamorising this is is extremely irresponsible, in my mm. opinion. It's a very interesting story that we'll get to. However, when I was looking for a write-up of this, I found something from diabetes.co.uk that says, don't try this at home. <laughs> this is an incredibly unusual case and one of the most extreme examples of a starvation diet ever recorded. Because Angus was extremely overweight, his body was more prepared for a fast and to burn fat. Mm. But once the body has burned through its fat stores, it needs energy from food to function properly. For people of a normal weight, fasting for long periods can cause health complications, including increased strain on the heart, even with nutritional supplementation. Therefore, fasts of this length should not be attempted by anybody. They are from a time in the 1960s where long-term fasts were being studied, studied with frequency, but there are other studies from this time where patients experienced heart failure and in some cases died of starvation. So needless to say, despite the fact that this is a fascinating story that this man actually managed to do it, Please ignore the embellishments uh, and the colourful language used in this article because they do make it sound like, hey, isn't he incredible? Maybe you should try that too. Don't. You could be incredible if you do this. Don't try it. And just Don't cut, do it, please. cut to the man who's withering on the floor, unable to move, <laughs> yeah. no energy to do anything. Well, isn't he incredible? Look at him. He's a warrior. This is, uh, this is a very special case. So please do not attempt this. And you are beautiful just how you are. You certainly uh, are. So here we go. Very little information is available about Barbary and his life before his record-breaking fast and weight loss. He was born in 1939 in Scotland and by all accounts lived a normal, uneventful life. His father owned a fish and chip shop. By the start of his fast, Barbary was working there for some time. As a young, young adult living in Tayport, Scotland, issues with his weight began to be apparent. By 27 years old, Barbary weighed 456 pounds, which is about 32 and a half stone mm. uh, in Britain. In June 1965, the 27-year-old was voluntarily admitted to a hospital in Dundee. He hoped that he would walk out with his weight in check. That's not how that works. You can't just walk in at 400 pounds and then walk out with, your, with all that weight gone. I don't know no. what they're implying there. Only a short fast was planned, but Barbary would instead go on to fast for an astonishing 382 days. In June 1965, Barbary marched into the University Department of Medicine. This was located at the Royal Infirmary of Dundee. He weighed 456 pounds, as we know, and he committed to fasting his way to health. Barbary quickly blew past the initial plan of a short fast, but he was determined to continue. As part of his fasting process, the consumption of any food was off the table. He was only allowed vitamins, electrolytes, some yeast for, for important amino acids, and finally, beverages like black coffee, tea and sparkling water. Some would take offence with the fact that Barbary occasionally took his tea and coffee with a little milk or sugar, but in all reality, his calorie intake remained close to zero for the entire duration of the fast. Good lord. Uh, what was that? I'm just saying, good lord! I like yeah. not. Yes, I like. I forgot. Like, yeah, you can't even have like a Coca Cola. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> like, if you're going yeah. all in on the big zero, no, 
no calories. He used both intermittent fasting as well as the starvation diet. This was a prolonged fast for weight loss, because during a fast the body turns to its own fat stores for energy through a process called autophagy. And during the fast, Barbary was losing weight quickly, as you could probably imagine. <laughs> He was shedding almost a pound a day on average. Monthly, he was losing around 22 pounds. As the months passed, Barbary held to the fast. The number on the scale continued to fall. Impressively, he was free to come and go from the uh, Maryfield Hospital, where Angus's doctors were continually mo uh, monitoring him. Don't know why that's impressive. While at home, he <laughs> always resisted all temptations. The fast wasn't all great, of course. He quit working at his father's fish and chip shop on Nelson Street. That's bad. Mm. One can imagine the mental and physical difficulties of such a protracted, strict fast. Yeah. Bar Barbary's ultimate weight goal was to reach 180 pounds. At that point, he planned to end his ludicrous fast. And after an astonishing, extraordinary 382 days on July the 11th, 1966, he accomplished it. He broke his fast that July morning with a boiled egg and some bread with butter. He told the onlooking press after that... It went down okay. I feel a bit full, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> I After feel last... a bit full. I suppose you would. Yeah, mm, yeah, you've, yeah. Got, you've not eaten for over a year. So he only stopped like... because he hit his target weight. It wasn't even like he was like, I, I simply, I'm, I'm going to die. It, like, you know, I'm, I feel really unwell, and da -da -da. I mean, maybe that as well. But he basically mm. stopped because he just reached the point that he wanted to, and he just stopped. <laughs> right, yeah. Done that now. I can stop. Right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so. I was thinking, like, what uh, bald egg and toast is like, what a, a, a kind of boring return to food. But yeah, I, like, if if like eat, in your head you'd be like, oh, I'm gonna eat, like I'm gonna eat like twenty pizzas and you know yeah. have like a proper dine out. But I think you'd literally explode from that kind of amount of food. Yeah. And yeah, also, you I guess. Just want crackers and toast. And, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing, isn't it, when people. Um, have been starving you can't just give them a load of food because they they will die you have yeah. to yeah there's sure. a very That's specific way like, to bring someone up from starvation i think yeah um, like in sub-saharan africa and stuff it, it's it was part of the it's been part of the difficulty and like how mm. do you how do you treat people like that so he lost 276 pounds over the course of his 382 day fast uh, and his fast was met with plenty of controversy and scepticism. The question was the same that has always been asked, how long can a man go without food? Barbary's fast went far beyond almost anyone thought possible. Even if he proved it possible to last an entire year and 17 days without food, many still could simply not believe that such an extensive period could be healthy. Yet, despite all manner of doubts from family, the press, and even his doctors, Barbary persisted. After his after his fast, doctors W. K. Stewart and Laura W. Fleming at the University of Dundee led a study on Barbary to judge the effects of his fast. They found that his prolonged fast had resulted in no ill effects. I don't oh, believe that. I refuse to believe yeah, that. Yeah, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> I mean, like, it doesn't sound right. I, I think guess he was sneaking Jaffa cakes on the side. Though. Yeah, he's probably like nibbling on leaves and stuff to get something in him. Uh, but I mean, I guess yeah, if you're getting your, your, like your key nutrients in. Mm. Um, your body's still getting energy, but nah, I, nah. I, I get woozy if I haven't eaten for like 12 hours and like that's, oh, no. I mean, even no, just no, the no. fiber from like, you know, the roughage that you need to, to Did like, he poo? I mean, Any... yeah, did he poo? Maybe he didn't I, poo. Yeah, I bet he pooed like maybe once a month or something. There's nothing in him. No. Wow. He just He just pisses all the time. Oh surely. my God, wow. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Uh, he does still hold the Guinness World Record for longest recorded fast. Uh, wow. Do we know that... how long he lived? No, actually. I can find out right now for you. Um, but that is the story of... Ro what was his first name? Robert? I'm just trying, looking at some Rob photos now. Uh, Angus, oh. sorry. Angus Barbary. Angus. Yeah. Uh, so here is a before and after photo of him. Oh, wow. okay. And Ooh. here... Oh, my. Wow, him. yeah. Stood I mean, he, in his old trousers. He certainly looks like he hasn't eaten in 380 days. <laughs> yeah, he's very, wow. very thin. Uh, he lived from, well, he didn't live the longest oh. life. Uh -oh. uh, yeah, no, he was born in 1939 and he died in 1990, so he was 50 years old. Right. Um, there's, there's no information on how he died. It just says he died in September 1990. So, see, maybe he was knocked down by a bus and he was perfectly Could have healthy. been. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. We simply do not know. But that is the story of Angus Barbary. Very interesting. And wow. fasted for over a year. Mm. I mean, I admire the dedication, but holy moly, just not, not, yeah. not that. Not that, please. 
No thanks. Yeah. No thanks. I just want to eat a chip, you know? Just one chip. <laughs> just one chip. Imagine just being around other people eating. It yeah. would just be so difficult. I was just as well he left the fish and chip shop because that would just be torturous. <laughs> mm-hmm. I do wonder if, like, he had, like, dreams about food or, like, like I imagine the first couple of weeks were pretty, pretty intense. But then does it be, does it get to the point where, like, you're repulsed by food? And, like, I, I don't know. It seems like he, like, he got back on it pretty quick, like, without much, much uh, issue. Like, he's happy to eat. So, I, yeah. don't, feel, I don't know. This feels like he's built different. And I, I'm not sure how. Like, it just seems <laughs> impossible in every way. Yeah. You'd think after, maybe after months, you would reach a point where... You, you just have a completely different mindset towards food. Like, mm. I, I can't imagine that at, at month eight that it feels any worse in month nine than it did in month eight because mm, it's just yeah. you've just not had food for over half a year. So it's all the same. But yeah, man, crazy. But just look at me now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> treat uh, the treat day that he had. He had his boiled egg. Boiled and eggs then... and buttered bread. <laughs> Poison crispy owl. Yeah. Oh, God. Very good. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, Ben. Very interesting. You're welcome. Uh, uh, Peter, would you yes. like to present your uh, viewer submitted thing to the class? I would. It's submitted to us by Jack Squires at J Squires underscore comedy. Uh, who says, oops, I've just opened Spotify. Whoops. Uh, it was. It's uh, from the Metro, written by Lucy Scolding Met, but it's hyphen Met, so I guess that's just her Metro account. Lucy Scolding, I'm going to assume. Um, and the headline is, Mum says her hunter's chicken looks just like terrifying film character. <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> it's my favourite article. The, 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 this food looks like something, and the press came and reported on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we even before I even start reading, uh, I'm just going to give you this photo, Ben, and uh, you can enjoy oh, that. No. <laughs> it oh is no, it's awful. Right. Has, has there been any development on our Discord user who's got the famous potato? Has oh there... yeah, I don't know. Oh See yeah, yeah. Been. He's... They've posted a, a few more pictures. Yeah, um, I think it might not. When was the last one posted? It wasn't too long ago. Um, yeah, about a week ago. Um, we haven't heard anything in a week, so I'm going to presume he's not with us or he's rotting um, and yeah. is no longer of this earth. He needs to be sent to the Metro. The Metro would love it. I'm just saying. They yeah. He's got to yeah. get on that. Oh yeah. my god, right, yeah, yeah, there we go. So put this on Twitter, tag the Metro, and then yeah, you're into, onto a gold mine. <laughs> you took it to a model village. Yeah! <laughs> uh, for context for those at home, oh, this yeah, is a picture yeah. of Mr. Blabeto, I think he was called. Um, sat, <laughs> sat at a tiny train station waiting for a train. Um, <laughs> surrounded He's by not going to fit on that train. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so good. Like, um, if you haven't already and you're not part of our Discord, go go have a scroll through the Podiats channel on there. There's like, there is a, just a myriad of images of this little potato man in just so many places. And it's on his delight. travels, yeah. yeah. So, um, a mum got a fright when she went to serve her family dinner and saw one of the scariest horror movie villains of all time <laughs> staring back at her. <laughs> Chantelle Warwick cooked a hunter's chicken dish for her, her husband Steve, and their three children after work. And at first, nothing was amiss. But she, quote, nearly peed herself when she plated it up and saw what was staring up at her. The chicken has been likened to Michael Myers from the Halloween films and mm. Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. The cheese stretched over the chicken breast looked scarily like the infamous mask, and there were markings of wide eyes, a nose, and a gaping mouth in all the right places. Leatherface is a character from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series, first appearing in the horror film series in 1974 as a member of a family of cannibals with his face masks and a chainsaw. So not someone you want to see when you're about to sit down to eat dinner. But it didn't stop Steve, who agreed that the face was horrible, Tucking into the dish anyway. Good. good oh, I love this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> now, before I continue, I put it to you that I find the nose, at the very least, questionable. I think that nostril holes have been made in that intentionally. I don't know. Certainly the nostril on the left looks 
Yeah, it's very, very perfect. Looks like it's been done with with some sort of implement, but yeah, it, yeah, it looks manufactured in a sense. But there, mm. there is a natural resemblance with the, yeah, whatever with the, the source marks. is. Does look like hair and yeah, yeah, the yeah. Marks. yeah. yeah no, there's the, definitely. Those... I think they may have just sort of enhanced it slightly, but yeah. For those um, who are maybe driving or something and can't search this on their phone, what do you yeah. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre Hunter's Chicken? Um, it is. Like the proportions are there, like it's like the the bit the bit of chicken does form the the, the outline of a face, and then mm. within the cheese, s- the saddest looking cheese I've ever seen. Like yeah. it's it looks like it's plastic, um, yeah. but yeah, it is like it's, it's got kind okay, of a weird texture to the skin. As it is like a mouth, it, it just like imagine a scary looking face made out of cheese, um, with no 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 soul behind the eyes, yeah. and it's it is, it is it's scary accurate. And, It'll and, be on the thread, and, of course, but um. Yes, yes. So uh, this is the best part, though, with these articles. You know, it starts with the obvious, like such and such from from London saw the face of Anne Robinson in their turkey dinner. But then they have to pad it out with just silly quotes from the person who they just like (laughs) on the phone for about half an hour. So Miss Warwick, who owns a transport business. Oh, they're not married. They've got three kids. (gasps) Terrible. Oh, my God. Uh, she said she was grateful her three children didn't spot the terrifying face in the dinner. She added that despite the fact she found it quite cool, she hopes that it never happens again. <laughs> Writing on social media on July the 19th, Ms. Warwick shared a photo of the scary looking chicken dish with the caption, I decided to make Hunter's chicken for my other half and got the shock of my life when it came out looking like Michael Myers from Halloween. When I looked at it, I nearly peed myself. I shouted to my husband, Steve, Steve, take a look at this. Initially, I thought it looked like Frankenstein. Um, 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 um well, yeah. I think you mean Frankenstein's monster, actually. Does it look like Frankenstein, though? Not really, no. But then, definitely Michael Myers from Hall- uh, Halloween. It was yes. horrible. Steve saw the face and said it looked horrible too. He still ate it though. He didn't care. Mine <laughs> looked like a regular hunter's chicken. It was fine. I enjoyed it a lot. I said to him, I thought it was pretty cool as I'd never seen anything like it before. Mm. It was... This just goes on and on. It was, <laughs> it was quite scary. I'm hoping it never, ever happens again. I've never seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so I had no idea to begin with. But looking at pictures people were posting of Leatherface on my post, it's definitely like him. It's horrendous. It's not what you want to see looking back at you from your dinner. My husband no. ate it. He's a braver person than than I am, that's for sure. I'm not a massive fan of horror films. I've not watched it yet, but it's on my to-watch list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the article wraps up. Um, the post ended up with over 7,000 likes, comments and shares, with lots of people agreeing that Hunter's Chicken looks scarily like the horrible character. The dish consists of a chicken breast wrapped in bacon covered with cheese and barbecue sauce. Miss Warwick said she didn't make it too often, but said her husband loves it, so she'll sometimes treat him to it and serve it with chips. Well, I'm glad this made the article. Brilliant. (laughs) Uh, And the meal was called the Hunter's Chicken, and it's called that because it involves chicken and hunt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there any word, Peter, on where they bought the chicken from? Which supermarket? Oh, I don't don't think so. Actually, the article doesn't yet finish. It's just that there's like a... God, there's more. How does it add? How does it not yet finish? (laughs) Miss Warwick continued, I stuck it in the oven and that's how it came out. I didn't see it straight away. There were others in the dish, so I took those out and plated them up. I went to take that one out with my fork. And when I went to do it, it was like, oh my god, and pulled my fork out, which made a little, which made the little nose indent. There you go. Uh, I told got you. you. Got you. I like to think that they're desperately trying to leave her house at this point, and she's still talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about my transport business. Put my transport business in the article, please. Uh, She says it was 100% worse after the nose. The hair is the barbecue sauce. The cheese makes the face. Where the eyes are, I think it's where the cheese has melted into the barbecue sauce. The mouth bit must be the bacon coming through. While Miss Warwick was convinced she saw Michael Myers in The Hunter's Chicken, others commented saying it was Leatherface. One person said, that's some Texas Chainsaw stuff. And another took to the comments to add, holy smokes, this is horrifying. Did you still eat it? Yeah, I'm not sleeping tonight. Thank you very much. Get in touch with our news team by emailing us at webnews. There you go, do it. Get in touch with their news team. Yeah, I've got a good one for you, yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> Good grief. Oh. Those things, they just have to pad them out with all that rubbish at the end. It's like Incredible. in the first three lines, it's here's the photo of the thing. This is what it looks like. Anyway, now let me tell you what chicken is. <laughs> God. Oh, God. Oh, amazing. I will never tire of Metro articles and all their filler. It's, it's yeah. a thing of beauty. How, how do you hit your word count? Oh, let me show you. Mm-hmm. <sighs> all right. Amazing. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank, thank you for sending that in. Dear listener. Um, dear listener. And I am going to move on to my thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I figured uh, we'd go to another historical figure, although maybe one you've never really considered before. Um, how about the man who invented the saxophone? Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Um, turns out he has quite the story to him so let's all have a little learn eh mikey i okay. almost brought this like last really? week or the week before so i'm gonna Ooh. sit back and enjoy your your rendition uh-huh. well i'm gonna not take credit for this uh, this is from today i found uh written by the lovely carl smallwood thank you for letting uh, well not letting me for um, writing this so i could use it thanks <laughs> <laughs> The favoured instrument of the likes of former President Bill Clinton. The saxophone has uh, variously been described as everything from the most moving and heart-gripping wind instrument to the devil's horn. (gasps) <gasps> devil's oh, horn devil's that's nice horn. yeah i've got the devil's horn rather fittingly then the instruments inventor adolf sax was a similarly polarizing figure and led a life many would qualify as bad ass um, <laughs> I, I, I reworded the, the opening paragraph a bit there um i, I realized led a life many would qualify as badass um doesn't really quite fit what you're about to hear it's more of just unfortunate i guess but bad in a badass way yeah born in 1814 in belgium sax was initially named antoine joseph sax but started going by the name adolf seemingly almost from birth though why he didn't go by his original name and how adolf came to be chosen has been lost to history unfortunately not so many adolfs uh, around anymore (laughs) no not anymore Oh, this is um, Adolf with a PH, so uh, I think that that name's due to come back in style. Mm. Sax's affinity for wind instruments quickly became apparent in his early teens when he began improving upon and refining the designs of these instruments, as well as coming up with inventing totally new instruments all on his own. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here because Sax was immeasurably lucky to have even made it to adulthood, given what he went through as a child. Described as chronically accident-prone, throughout his childhood, Sax fell victim to a series of increasingly unusual mishaps, several of which nearly cost him his life. The first occurred at age three when he fell down three flights of stairs bad and landed. Ass, that is so <laughs> badass. Fucking man. rad, dude. Do it again. Yeah, do a flip. Yeah. Um, and he landed oh unceremoniously at the bottom with his head smacking on the stone floor. Bad Sick. Ass. Badass. Yes. Rad. Reports of the aftermath vary somewhat from it being from him being in a coma for a week to simply being bedridden for that period, unable to stand properly. This isn't all him getting injured, but this is this is just his child. This is the childhood section of his Wikipedia article. Yeah, mm. right. <laughs> a young Sax would later accidentally swallow a large needle, mm, uh, which he miraculously passed without incident or injury. Which, yeah. Um, yeah, congrats, good job. An, Smaxophone. Uh, Sorry. Smack. Very good. There you go. Nice. Bab, got him. Um, he also also just drank a concoction of white lead, copper oxide, and arsenic one day as well for fun. Good. Um, in another incident, he got... This is very, so Looney Tunes. In another incident, he got blown across his father's workshop when a container of gunpowder exploded <laughs> when he was oh standing God. next to it. His dad worked for the Acme Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you got blasted to the other side of the room, had like black soot all over his face, and he's just his white eyes peeking through. And when he stood up, there was just a, a silhouette against the wall where the ash had gone around him. Um, da, 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 yeah, we've got oh, 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 um, and uh, yeah, another one, uh, courting death. He was injured while walking in the streets when a large slate tile flew off a nearby roof and clocked him on the head. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, Jesus, I think he's very unlucky. Good Lord. And this yeah. is all before he invented the saxophone. Yeah, at this point, he's like... Oh, like, think. 
it, yeah. the invention yeah. of the saxophone was as a result of all these injuries. <laughs> <laughs> Only a man who's repeatedly been hit in the head could come up with this. Yeah. <laughs> um, this I think is my favourite bit. Um, all of these injuries led Sax's understandably worried mother, Maria, to openly say her young son was condemned to misfortune before adding, he won't live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He won't live. Oh God! But uh, live he did, and um, once he got past his his plight of just being knocked the hell out repeatedly, uh, he got he properly started digging into instrument inventions, um, and he started showcasing his instruments around in Belgium. And he got to uh, a final in a competition with his instrument. So he entered at the age of 27. And it was this one was actually this competition in particular was actually to be the public debut of the saxophone. Uh, but when Sax wasn't around, someone, rumoured to be a competitor, who disliked the young upstart, kicked the instrument, sending it flying and damaging it too severely to be entered into the competition. Oh, the, no. the cutthroat world of instrument making competitions. <laughs> who would have guessed? <laughs> I don't know about any. I I was basically just going to say, yeah, the guy who invented the saxophone nearly died in all all of these ways, and that that's news to me. The oh, yeah, the actual uh, competition, it, it, that's wild. It's wild. I mean, he had a tumultuous childhood, and his adulthood con- adulthood continued to be tumultuous, just right. thankfully in a less physically painful way. Yeah. Um, and I think he kind of had a few incidents like this while he was in ben- Belgium. So he said, ah, "Screw this, I'm getting out." And he decided to move to France because he heard that the French military were looking to revolutionize their bands. And so he figured Mm. that was his best shot of, you know, making it and getting it accepted and part of the culture of music. Um, And yeah, he wanted to go to Paris and, you know, leave. Wait, hold on. Uh, Reading's hard. Yeah, uh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it. Yeah, uh, I'm getting there. Ah, yes, there we go. And when he got to France, he very quickly made a name for himself. And it wasn't long before he gathered the funds to open the Adolf Sax Musical Instrument Factory. Ooh, oh. he's doing it. He's doing it. Uh, the young Belgian upstart, who was seemingly a prodigy when it came to inventing and improving on existing implements, threatened to leave the other musical instrument makers in Paris in the dust. You're not going to believe this stuff, man. It's nuts what the sax can do. Said rivals thus began resorting to every underhanded trick in the book to try and ruin him. From frequent slanderous newspaper articles, to lawsuits, to attempts to have his work boycotted. In spite of these... F- yeah, <laughs> ah, we don't like this newfangled sax, get out, ban the sax, down with sax, pretty much is kind of how it went. Yeah, in, sp- in spite of all these efforts to put him down, even res- resorting to performing behind a curtain to keep the design of his instrument secret, he did eventually fulfill his dream of having his instrument be used by the military and was awarded a contract with them. But as a weapon? As just, <laughs> I mean, as a, just an instrument, I guess. Yeah, just the, I, the military was big on marching bands and stuff. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah come on, we'll, we'll use your sax. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> So clearly his rivals knew he had something good then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, I you, so. have you ever heard of sax before? It's oh, music to my Phenomenal. ears. Phenomenal. Sax is like the, uh, is the one non-standard instrument I'd love to learn. Non-standard instrument? What's a standard instrument? I guess keyboard. No. <laughs> drums, guitar. Drums, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I got the lungs for it. Uh, do, do, do. But um, yeah, him getting this contract only spurred on the haters more. Um, at this point... Um, a group of instrument makers created an anti-sax club of sort uh, where they'd devise plans to try and bring him down and kind of pool their resources God. together to make it happen. Oh, no. Brutal. Uh, they repeat- repeatedly sued him, but none of them ever really kind of came to anything. It was all quite baseless and just flippant, as you can imagine. Um Oh, my God, I keep losing myself. There's so, there's so many words. da 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 Mm-hmm. Wait, where the where the hell did I? Oh where my god! Where did you get to, Mikey? <laughs> where did I get to? Using military, I got the contract. They sued yeah. him. Yes, there yeah. we go. Uh, at this point, he was just really fed up with the whole thing, and an infuriated sax countered by withdrawing his patent application and giving the other instrument makers permission to make a saxophone if they had the skill. <gasps> Uh, so he's like hey look if you, you think this is the next big thing you you do it then i'm giving you, you a 
Yeah, you, you do it then. If you want it, if you want it so bad, you can have it. I gave them a year in which to re- re- recreate the instrument, but no one could bloody do it. Ah. Uh-huh. Um, and for a while, he kind of coasted. It was quite nice. You know, he, he had his contract with the military. He was doing well, making his instruments, making good money. And then after a tumultuous few years in the military in France, the contract was rescinded and he was cut off, sadly. Oh. Um, but um, at this point, apparently, his, his haters weren't happy with just metaphorically ruining his life and his business. At one point, Sachs's workshop mysteriously caught fire. Badass. And- Badass. And in another uh, in another incident, an unknown assassin fired oh. a pistol at one what? of Sax's assistants, thinking it was Sax. Oh my god. It's a it's a conspiracy by Big Bassoon or something. Yeah. <laughs> Big wind. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and things kind of kept getting rockier and rockier for him. And at this point, he was totally destitute, not a penny to his name. Uh, when luckily a friend came along and gave him 30,000 francs, oh. Uh, w- oh. which is quite nice. Uh, do with Sachs, a friend like that? Yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, quite nice. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this wasn't a gift as, as Sax had assumed, and it was in fact a loan. Um, oh. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, so when the benefactor, benefactor died a couple of years later, uh, his heirs noticed this transaction had taken place and hunted sacks down for, for everything he get and demanded the money within 24 hours oh god, my he's gonna god. have to put on the best sack show this country <laughs> has ever seen uh, uh i i i, oh, I should have really found out what thirty thousand francs uh is valued at uh, we can look could, that up yeah thirty thousand francs in 1852 okay um, and yeah, so with this kind of plight in front of him, he just decided to leg it out of the country and go to London. Um, and even then, he still wasn't safe. He was caught and uh, they basically got him for everything he had, made him file for bankruptcy and he had to close his factory, unfortunately. Ah. But the, the military came back, gave him a new contract. And from there, thankfully, that's the end of the, 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 the ups and downs. It was all pretty smooth sailing from there. The instrument grew in popularity, and he seemed to do quite well out of it. Oh. Uh, and there's a, a fun little extra tidbit at the end here. Um, on the side, when he wasn't fighting countless legal battles and inventing and making instruments, Sachs also had a penchant for dreaming up alternate inventions, such as designing a device that could launch a 500-ton, 11-yard-wide mortar bullet. He called it, and this isn't a joke, the Saxo Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> If only that made it into regular, <laughs> regular usage. Oh, uh, amazing. And um, he also designed a truly massive organ intended to be built on a hillside near Paris, capable of being heard clearly by everyone throughout the city when it oh was played. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lovely. I wish, we, I wish we got that. Oh, Look man. at this that he made as well. The six-piston trombone. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that. It's amazing. Kind of funky. I just opened the uh, wow. his Wikipedia page because I was I was sure that was there was at least one thing that he did um, that nearly killed him that you didn't mention, and I found mm-hmm. it here. Several times he avoided accidental poisoning and asphyxiation from sleeping in a room where varnished furniture was drying. <laughs> um, so that's oh, that's pretty dodgy. And um, apparently, you know, you said his mum said uh, he won't live. Uh, apparently, his neighbours called him. Little Sax, the ghost. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. This is nice. Oh man, so, Little Sax. Wow, I didn't. I I hadn't really read any of the the later life stuff. Um, that's it's pretty uh, exciting life he lived. Yeah, I think I think in the end he did all right out of it. I hope so. He, he the, the 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 boy deserves a break, please. Yeah. Uh, and that that is that is the story of Adolf. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mikey, for that. Excellent. I'm desperately trying to find... All it's trying to do is convert 1,852 francs into pounds, which is not what I want it to do. I'm struggling to find what francs were worth in 1852. Oh, so you can convert French francs into your euro. Mm, no, I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, let, I've, I've got something. Really hard. It's the equivalent of 30,000 francs in the year 1852 in the currency of... Uh, you got Great British Pounds in here? Sterling? Pound. There we go. Uh, 
Wait, euro. Let's do euro in the year. Okay. Oh my god, this is hard. Oh, data for any of the currency units is missing for any of the years you want to compare. Good. Brilliant. It's also <laughs> just showing me where to buy coins from 1852 if I wanted to collect them, uh, right. which is also not very helpful. Uh, <laughs> citation needed, mm. but it's probably a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it sounds a lot. Enough to make probably him flee the country, try to pay it back. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you, Mikey, for that. Thank you. And with that, that concludes all of the things both listener submitted and presenter presented there we are uh, hey. thank you boys for your things thank you listeners for submitting your things remember you can submit relevant news stories to us uh, on the lead up to whenever it is we do the next episode hopefully in a in a couple of weeks time uh, so keep an eye on twitter for that and then you can just send us a link to a local news story some crazy shit that's been happening near you mikey i believe there's some sort of shop you're gosh darn right. If you head over to vidiotsofficial.com and click on the enticing little link that says shop, you will be greeted by a veritable bounty of f cloth and porcelain goodies. A mug still made out of porcelain or is that more fancy? Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. Something like that. Ceramic, ceramic or kind of porcelain. Yeah, or ceramic. Or that sounds right. Ceramic mug and cloth things to put on your body, including T-shirts. A hat, ooh, a hoodie, stickers, and a mug. Absolutely wonderful. So, oh. um, yeah, go check it out. That's uh, videotofficial.com and click on shop and you'll, yeah, have, have a browse. Absolutely. Mm. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all.com forward slash official. Discord is videotofficial.com forward slash Discord. Thank you to Tommy and Fleckers for moderating there for us. Go check out that potato. Uh, that's yeah. going on adventures hopefully it'll be featured in the metro very soon um <laughs> fingers crossed anyway twitch.tv forward slash video it's official no streams planned currently but we will of course let you know if that changes and go to podiots.com donate three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show join pod squad support the things you enjoy and help us uh keep doing this show for you mikey's gonna kick us off one more time we begin with raindrop joy uh, Fred Weber in Florida. Let's get Cheggy Cheggy. Let's get Cheggy Cheggy. Let's get Cheggy the Jungle. Very good. Di mm -hmm. Thank you. Diogenes Nuts. Uh, Nia changed experience. He was generous. Uh, very generous. Thank you very much. Mr. Blobby's Mistress. Lord on Vacation of Ick. Don Ako 7 and Stephen Scodes. We've also got Finn Tristam, David Dickinbum, Cheap Ass Chips. Bob, uh, Blobby Dazzler, Stop Clenching Your Fists, Pod Squad Triple Crown Winner, who's very generous, JoJo's Bizarre Philosophy, Di Dioja D's Nuts, Michael Thunderfart Johnson, Arse Face, and Ben, are you ready to, to do this one together? Yeah. I Am Become D's Destroyer of Nuts. Uh, and the rest of my pod squad is as follows. It's just disappeared for me. Bear with me. The very generous Ricky Dicky 3 Peter Peter Fecal Transplant, Mr. Macca, Prince Beefcakes, the obscenely generous sexy young homosexual, Andorra the Explorer, the bovine drink for Vim, and R.I.P. Vimbos. So thank you to the pod squad for this week. And that is, what is it? Podiots.com is where you can go. Three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the podcast uh what comes next what's out on videos this week peter uh we have got let me see um is this going out on this saturday yes ninth yeah okay well i'll do up to then then uh we have got becoming beautiful barbie makeover magic part two poddy it's episode 13 spook ronto I don't know why it's called that, because it came out in August, but that's fine. Post some Tat 27, Mike, uh, Miley's special toys, Barbie Makeover Magic in real life, the live action finale. Worst games ever, 3D Pets, Volume 1. Ben is dead, lol, Vanilla Minecraft, Episode 14. Vidiot's live Twitch stream, Mario Party 4 and Worms. From Beyond the Grave, Cheggers Party Quiz. Ick Running the Gauntlet, Ick Vanilla ben Minecraft. Cheggers. Ick Ben Cheggers. <laughs> Running the Gauntlet, which is Vanilla Minecraft episode 15. Insomnia 63 vlog, Finding Billy's Long Lost Cousin. 
Person Tat number 28, Noah and Billy Crochet Walrus. Watch Dogs 2, Proximity Mind Challenge. Worst Games Ever, Turning Point, Fall of Liberty. An Explosive Finale, Vanilla Minecraft Episode 16. Vidiot's Live Twitch Stream, Dark Souls Remastered number 1. Uh, the Betrayal, Worms Revolution. Hunting Hat Films in Prop Hunt Part 1. Podiots Episode 14, Holes. Uh, Fortnite Sandwich Making Challenge. Post some tat number 29, your tat is beautiful. Worst games ever, Fight Club. Draw the fans two. Draw the fans two, that's it. That's the last one. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Michael Johnson, where are you on the internet, please? At Parrot Boy on Twitter and also at Parrot Boy on Instagram. Go have a look-see. B- wonderful. And Peter, <laughs> where are we on the internet? Uh, we are at... That Peter Austin and at confused underscore dude on Twitter, respectively. Uh, and also together we are at Team Triple Jump on Twitter, but also, more importantly, over on YouTube and Twitch. It's all that Team uh, uh, team Triple Jump, at Team Triple Jump, where we're doing video gamey stuff. We're playing worse games and we're contacting Rules Boss and we are um, cooking and doing fun, silly things that you know and love from the video days. Finally, why not leave us an iTunes review or a review on your platform of choice? Five stars, preferably. It's something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. That's the reason it helps. I've said that in all the wrong order. Uh, but yeah, go leave us a review on your platform of choice. It, re- it really does help things along. So so go go and do that. We will we'll check and we will know. We'll go and ask yeah. if, you, if you haven't done it. So go fucking do it now, please. Thank you. Do we have a final question so that we can bugger off into the sunset for this week? Um... Anybody got any, got anybody got any contacts at the metro or anybody work for the metro? Yeah. Even if better, you work for the metro. Yeah. Let us know or yeah. any other sort of local news or tabloid or yeah. yeah. Let's feed. make this potato go viral. Come on, everyone, <laughs> pull yeah. your resources. Blub it, Mister well, Blubito breaks the internet. Let's go. <laughs> There we are, everybody. That's another episode of Potty. It's in the bag. You look after yourselves. We'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. Bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.